Oh, good evening, everyone, again. Uh, it is a pleasure and a privilege to be able to uh, let you know about the first BIM educational offering from Algonquin College. Uh, and we're very thankful to Carlton for hosting this event uh, because of our strike. <laughs> Happy that's over. <laughs> so um, during this process, to become certified or, or pass through approval from the Ministry of Education, this is a lengthy and very laborious process. I think Pietro can agree. It took us three years from the beginning of the idea to final approval from the Ministry because this is a new subject area. And throughout that time, we had the opportunity to discuss titling. What are we going to call this thing? And life cycle management, as I'll continue through some of the slides, is um, a multifaceted term. Um, and it was not an easy one to come to. Uh, certainly, we're looking at an advanced application of BIM. We will be coming forward with an operator level uh, intro, if you will. Uh, in future off of the same framework. Uh, but this was conceived as an advanced level program and needed to encapsulate the life cycle aspect of how data is managed across downstream, upstream, uh, the whole kit and caboodle. So this is a graduate certificate offering, uh, which is two semesters full time. Uh, to be uh, qualified as an Ontario College graduate certificate, there needs to be performance of complex actions. Uh, they need to contribute to solutions in non-routine situations. Uh, the candidate needs to demonstrate leadership and guidance um, and professional skills. All of this in mind of what we hear today in terms of BIM manager, information manager, even BIM coordinator, what does it take for that person to succeed in their job? That coming to school, taking a graduate certificate would enable them to up their career, to apply skills immediately in the workforce and not have to be retrained where they get hired. So we require for entry into the program that you have a degree or diploma in a related field to demonstrate that you have an understanding of how buildings or infrastructure projects go together also an understanding of project delivery, and some background experience with a BIM authoring tool. So as I mentioned, it is for an advanced audience. Um, typically, we are trying to find those with previous BIM authoring experience. Uh, certainly, knowing how to model is a fundamental skill if we're talking about building information modeling. Um, the industry relevant terms, although we don't want to get fixated on titles, uh, the common terms that are known, at least in our industry, are BIM manager. The UK uses information manager, which is slightly different. We look at that as well, interrogate that. And I've seen as well, depending on the size of the firm uh, and its focus and its uh, history with adopting BIM, a BIM coordinator at a really large office may be doing the same task that a BIM manager at a smaller office is doing. It, the, it's a bit of a spectrum and you can weigh it in different ways. So we try not to focus on the role itself, but if you look at BIM managers, quote unquote, in industry today, what are the type of characteristics that have made them succeed in that role? What are the skills and the tasks that they need to be able to perform uh, to be efficient at their job? So we try not to make it exclusive to these BIM specific roles. Certainly the goal is that BIM becomes ubiquitous. We don't have to talk about it anymore. It's integrated in all aspects of project delivery and everybody's workflows. Uh, but to get there, we do need this um, leadership role uh, that BIM managers often take. And from that, we need an understanding of the life cycle of the data. So as I mentioned, life cycle, just the term life cycle itself, let alone adding management to it, depending uh, which area of the asset life cycle you're from, it has different meanings. So the job I'm in now, life cycle manager, has a different meaning than the way we're using life cycle here. But we are talking about uh, the overall themes, coordination, collaboration, 
life cycle, um, communication, integration. How are we teaching this? How are we going to teach this? Um, Certainly when we talk about the life cycle of a project in a BIM context, certain keywords come up like use cases or information exchanges. Um, when we talk about management of data or information, we have to understand how you come to, the, come to having knowledge or even wisdom. How does that get transcribed through? And certainly this multidisciplinary reality. How are we teaching our students to better interact with the various disciplines so that that integration, that collaboration comes to fruition. What we do um, in this program is to try and apply those elements in situ. So we follow the life cycle throughout the program from start to finish to live those experiences. So our teachings, our case studies, our assignments focus on the specific uh, project and life cycle phases uh, in succession. So you're walking through even a contractor type role won't be working in the design phase, but we want them to have that exposure so they understand the other person in that integrated team. So our overall goals are um, lofty. Uh, we don't want to promote BIM wash, which is which can be difficult to do. Uh, we definitely want to promote critical thinking. You're not a robot. Uh, you need to be creative in your processes, creative in how you collaborate, creative in the solutions you deliver, enabled by said tools. And we certainly, as a college, uh, must have a practical application focus. Meaning ready to go to work. So we follow a framework approach. This was devised, gosh, four years ago now. Uh, where we identified five key streams, and it doesn't matter at which level you're training at. Because it follows a framework, you can identify easily where you fit in, where you need more training, where you want to focus on. It makes it easier to compare across uh, various profiles. So the five streams came from this. We started with the three common definitions of BIM. So BIM as a tool. BIM as a process, BIM as um, a foundation, if you will, a principle. And we noticed that there was, uh, in, in terms of an educational offering, uh, it was very important to understand standards, how they work in practice, what's available, as well as your outcomes. So the specific deliverables you do with that data. Um, could be model-based, could be extractions from that model, could be used in analysis, different deliverables for within project delivery. Uh, what do those look like? What are those outcomes? And then we capstone that with a one-week practical blitz. We call it a blitz. We do this at the end of each semester. Uh, we invite industry partners to participate, and we demonstrate the skills that have been developed over that semester. So it's good for industry to see what we're doing, good for industry to see the students that they really might hire, and it's great for the students uh, to meet prospective employers and demonstrate their skills. So as I mentioned, the five are set across the different life cycle phases. So we start at the beginning, uh, planning, even pre-planning, uh, to the end of design within the first semester, big blitz, pre-construction to handover and operations uh, into facility management and operations, Big blitz. Graduation, yay. So as I mentioned, our industry partners are invited to these blitzes. Uh, the blitz itself lasts a week, and it is considered its own course, its own standalone course, culminating experience, learning lots of new terms in the educational arena that are new to me. Um, and it is to mimic real world, real world scenarios. So what I really want to see in these blitzes are train wrecks break it. Make all the mistakes you can. This is your chance. You're not an industry. It's not going to cost anyone money. Kill your server. Do whatever you got to do. Take it to the limits. And we're talking about applied innovation, and this is where it would be appropriate to see some of that without uh, any repercussions, if you will. 
So I'm very proud of the faculty team. Uh, some of them are here today. Uh, Kirk Stalke and uh, Peter Croft are here. Uh, I see Patrick Lalonde here as well and Megan Bend. I'm really proud of this faculty team. It's uh, very high end. Um, it's really a privilege to work with them, so thank you all very much. They have, they are industry practitioners. I think this is a huge draw of the program. They are industry practitioners. Uh, they have developed their own curriculum material. So this is not textbook stuff per se, but real in the field experience. And then they also teach it. Any program at Algonquin uh, is supported by a program advisory committee. Uh, we have a few of those members here. So Omar is our chair of the PAC. And John Hale as well, who we'll see up at the panel, is our vice chair. Um, the program advisory committee is really important. They meet only a few times a year, but they offer us key advice and key eyes on the program to make sure we are delivering on what industry needs. Uh, so we're constantly looking for other industry partners to join, uh, to join the program advisory committee. If you are one of those potential candidates, um, I encourage you to let me know. Um, and these are our primary go-to people uh, for invitations to our Blitz weeks. Uh, application is easy. You just go on the AlgonquinCollege.com website. You go in the little search field. Type BIM or Building Information Modeling, it'll be the first hit. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, all of that. It's very easy to come across and you'll find a lot more information on the program itself there as well. The next cohort will be next fall. And I have to uh, let you know, it's entirely possible to maintain a full-time job and attend school uh, with a little bit of flexibility from your employer. Some of the classes start around 4 p.m but we do accommodate the classes in the evening time so you can work and learn at the same time. So thank you very much. <laughs>